Hey guys, how are you doing? Um, I just want to make a quick video today covering how to run a team in this league, this college league. I'm looking at my team right now, the San Diego State Aztecs. And how are you guys doing, by the way? I just want to introduce this video by saying it's a very hot day in San Diego. It's the last day of summer and temperatures in the mid 90s very nice though i like fall fall is coming and uh, nights are getting a little chillier here but you know hardly chilly but when you live in southern california it's it's a little colder here when it's 60 degrees than it is other places other people would be like 60 degrees 55 degrees that's not cold in San Diego, that's kind of cold, especially when you live on the uh, east side of town, inland from the ocean. I live in El Cajon, and we have really chilly nights here and very hot days during certain times of the year. Anyways, um, I want to get to the point here. Okay, so I'm looking over my team right now, the San Diego State Aztecs, and I realize that right now Trey Lance is going to be kind of a, a lost cause this year in this particular league it doesn't look like he's going to be able to beat out Garoppolo for a starting position because Garoppolo is the starter I mean he's experienced he's gone to the he's gone to the Super Bowl nobody has traded for Garoppolo and I think what what the 49ers have done this year is even though they're being coy about it They've been coy, you know, all throughout the preseason. But they're going to they're gonna basically redshirt Trey Lance. They're gonna let Jimmy Garoppolo teach him the ropes, and then they're gonna turn this team over to Trey Lance next year, most likely. So that being said, um if I'm the operator of this team, I'm the general manager of the San Diego State Aztecs, I'm thinking Damn it. You know, it's like, I really want to win, right? But look here. I've had a couple of games right over here. I've scored decent. Came up short. You know, close games. But I'm 0-2. And now I'm looking at, I got Alabama coming up. They're not really good. But then I got App State. They might be redshirting. So I could go 2-2, two two, perhaps. Michigan, maybe I can go 3-2. and two. But then I got Oregon coming up. Cal, I could I could win that game, but then down the stretch I've got Tulane, I've got Maryland, Ohio State, New Mexico State, Fresno State, and Georgia. All teams that are well stocked and have quarterbacks, the chances of this program winning seven games, which is what you need in this league to get to the you know, possibly the championship bracket, at least to a better bowl game. The chance of the chances of winning seven games here, not so good. So bear with me, guys. It's my day off. I'm making this video around five o'clock, and I've been kicking it all day long. Been looking at the stock market, and I got to admit, it's my day off. So I'm not driving. I'm not going anywhere. So yeah, I've been having some fun. So let's have some fun, guys. Let's 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 look at how you run a team in this league. So I'm looking at this situation and thinking, you know what? State doesn't have a chance. I mean, seriously, it's a shot in the dark. It really is. So it's time to start looking at red shirts. So let's let's just look over the situation. This is what you do in this league with red shirting. This is how you determine this. If you figure Trey Lance isn't going to start, you red shirt him. There he is on the farm. I red shirted him today. Or at least I started the process. I can reverse it. If he plays in more than four games, he's not going to get the red shirt. So I got Devin Singletary. Singletary's coming alive now this year. Now look at that. You know, when you pull up their card, you can look at past years, and this is what I do all the time. Devin Singletary's definitely got potential. And this year, he's out to a good start. He's in his third year. But if it's a lost cause, it makes sense to red shirt him now. Because we're not going to compete. And in this league, 
we reward we we reward success, not failure. So if you lose, you don't get a higher pick next year. If you lose, you get a low pick. If you win, you get a high pick. The reason this league is like a college league. Successful programs attract talented players. Period. This is meant to be like a research league for you guys. You know, it's not your 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 father's fantasy football league. So those of you who haven't really been paying attention, I don't know who you are out there in this league. There's only seven owners, eight owners, I think. But for those of you that haven't been paying attention, that's what this league is about. We reward success, not failure. So if you have no chance of winning, you might start thinking about redshirting talented players until you have a quarterback who's capable of taking you to the promised land. Let me say also, in college, in general, teams that win national titles don't have quarterbacks at the helm that aren't NFL prospects. It happens sometimes, but not in general. So the thing is, is you really need a good quarterback to win in this league. And that's the way it is in college. So Trey Lance is very capable of winning, but maybe not this year. Joey Garoppolo is basically the starter. He's the veteran. And it seems to me that he's there to teach Trey Lance how to do the job, a la Patrick Holmes, when he studied under Alex Smith in Kansas City. It's the same situation. As the uh, general manager of the Aztecs this year, I was really hoping that Trey Lance would win the job, but it's pretty obvious that he's not going to win the job. I was even comfortable with him, you know, taking like maybe uh, 20 snaps a game because it would give this team a chance to win, but it's obvious that the Niners aren't going to have any part of that. This whole preseason has just been a dog and pony show. You know, they're just playing with people. You know, you have um, you have all these pundits coming out. Uh, like uh, the former quarterback of the uh, 49ers. Steve Young. You know, putting out something where he was saying, you know, Trey Lance needs to be on the field now. I mean, you know, when you go out looking for news, it's so confusing. And that's why I like this league, and that's why I create my leagues the way I do, where you have, like, uh, you in my other league, uh, my normal football league, you have uh, two starters at wide receiver, but you get a list three, and the best two score. And that third guy has a chance to score if he beats out the losing tight end and the losing running back. Because the thing is, is in the NFL, it's all about deception. You know, Bill Belichick wrote the book on that. You know, you can never trust anything that guy says. So here's Steve Young saying, you know, Trey Lance needs to be the guy. He has to be on the field. And you get hope as a fantasy guy. You're like, yeah, Trey Lance, man, he needs to be on the field. Steve Young even says it. And then what happens? You know, they go with the status quo. They go with Garoppolo. Even though everybody knows they're going to replace Garoppolo in the end, they really want to replace him with a guy who can run the ball. That's why they drafted Trey Lance. Okay, so, you know, that's why I create my leagues the way I do. I don't want you guys to be, you know, putting your foot to the fire, in, in essence. Remember, it's my day off. Okay, so, Trey Lance... It's not looking good. I I seriously doubt he's going to be starting for the 49ers anytime soon. Unless, of course, Joey G, Jimmy G, Jimmy Garoppolo gets hurt. So I decided this week I'm gonna I'm gonna redshirt Trey Lance until further developments. If something happens to Jimmy G, yeah, I might reconsider this, but you know what? Trey has played one game. He didn't play last week, so technically he's only played in one game. And so I can use him 
in the bowl season, if he's the starter of the Niners at the end of the year, I can use him for three games in this league during bowl season. And bowl season is going to be week 15, 16, and 17. And that very well might get me the NIT championship, not an invited tournament. Those are the losing teams, the teams that didn't make the potential championship bracket. And of course, remember, if you look in the rules, you can't be ranked lower than seventh and have a chance to go to the national championship series. Okay, guys, that's what it is in this league. Up to seven teams can be thrown in the mix for that national championship. And that's the way it is. And um, I've given it a lot of thought, so don't question don't question my my uh, my methods. All right, or you should, but once you do and you look into it and you reason it out, you realize why that's that makes sense. Okay, so anyways, I want to get on with this. I'm just I, this video is all about just trying to show you how to build a team in this league. So here we have Singletary. Hit the player card. Okay, and I'm going to go over something here on the player card. Go to past years, and you can see his past years. Now, if the guy had less than 10 points, like less than 11 points in a given season, he's, he gets a red for a red shirt. And Singletary doesn't get that because he scored 46, 41. This year he's at 10. If I red shirt him now, he has two active games. He's still, if I red shirted him, he could still play for my team in bowl season after week 15 and still get a red shirt this year. And even if Devin Singletary ends up in the top 14 in running backs, it won't cost me a draft restriction because I redshirted him. And that's what it looks like right now. I'm going to have to redshirt Singletary because he's looking solid. He's looking capable of playing into his fifth year. So if I redshirt him by making him inactive, which I did today, he has until his fifth year. He has through his fifth year to play for my team. Kenneth Gainwell. Why play this guy? Really? Right? So I redshirted him. It's his rookie year. May as well. It's a throwaway season. I don't have a quarterback. And you need that. You need a quarterback. You know, it's crazy. When you have to talk fast and you've had a day off and you've been kind of chilling and kicking with a bottle of uh, Absolute, Words come out wrong. I hope you guys don't judge me, all right? Don't judge me, man. All right, guys, let's keep on going, though. I got good information here. Justin Jackson, I, I don't care. I, I just don't believe in the guy. I'm going to keep him active because, again, we reward success, not failure in this league. So maybe somehow Justin Jackson has a big game and gets me a victory. He's not eligible for the retro red shirt, as I can see. But who cares? I'm playing him because he's not eligible for the retro red shirt. So I got to play him. Boston Scott, same thing. Guy's fading. He's in his fourth year. There's no reason to red shirt this guy. Not really. Because maybe I can win. Ramondre Stevenson, a lot of reason to redshirt him. Obviously, he needs to sit on the sidelines. He fumbled in week one. You know Belichick. This guy's going to have to sit it out this year. He's going to have to learn. And I think Belichick is fine with that. He's looking at this guy who's like 22, 23 years old and saying, dude, he got a major workout at Oklahoma. He, he worked a lot there. We need to give this guy a year off so that he can give us like two to four years of, you know, one to four years of strong play for the Patriots. That's that's the business of the NFL, guys. Okay, so let's keep on going here. C.D. Lamb. Well, if we're redshirting, if there's no chance of winning, why would you take a chance and keep C.D. Lamb on the field for, you know, the hope of winning a game against some crummy team like... Uh, Let's look at the schedule over here. I don't know, Alabama, App State. You could beat Michigan, maybe. You could beat Cal for sure. But who cares? 
You know, it's not going to make a big difference. Red shirt the guy. Jalen Guyton already has a red shirt. He has a retro red shirt. He's in his third year. He's having a good year this year, but look at the first year he played. That's a retro red shirt right there. He scored less than 11 points. Retro. So you got Guyton in his third year for the next uh, two years. You don't need to make him inactive. Again, we, we reward success, not failure in this league. So if you sink to the bottom, you're not going to get the first pick in next year's draft. You're getting the last pick. So remember that. This is like college. You know, players want to go to good schools. That's the way it is. Sage Sherratt, of course, he's farmed just in case. I just don't want to think about Sage right now. He didn't make the roster. I think at some point maybe Sage can make the roster. He's on the practice squad right now, I think, with Detroit. But the thing is, is in the offseason, you know, if he, if, he, if he resurfaces this year and starts putting up some numbers, I have the option to keep this guy. Why not redshirt him? And so on and so forth. Uh, Mark Andrews. We're not going to compete this year. So Mark is in his fourth year. He's had a great career. All big scores. And I, we can go back to 18. Uh, this league wasn't in existence in 18, so they don't keep track of that for us. But the longer this league goes, the more they're going to keep track of the old scores, which makes it easier for me to figure out who's retro retch red shirtable but you know seriously i want mark andrews to stay around here because he's a great tight end and we're not going to win this year so he's had a couple of games already this year you can go back here and see his game log he's already played a couple games so i only have mark for two games in bowl season so that means week 15 i can't use him but i can use him in week 16 and 17 I have Josh Oliver, who hasn't done much, but he's already got a retro red shirt, so I can keep him active, right? You look at past years, see? Retro red shirt, no problem. He needs to be active. Juwan Johnson I picked up. There's a little, a uh, little bit of a stir over Juwan. Second year out of Oregon. My beloved Ducks. Last year scored well less than 11 points, so there you have it. Juwan Johnson, retro redshirt. We have him for like year two, three, four, and five. That's four years. It's a good pickup. So this, this is how you operate a team that's losing in this league. You know, you go through it, think about it logically. This is the thinking man's league. You have to be a thinking man. And you can even be a drunk man and run a team in this league, as long as you're a thinking man. I can go through all my roster here and, and keep on going, but I think, I hope you guys get the point, how to run a team in this league. So that being said, I want to finish off by just looking over what happened this last week. Good week. And um, looks like Tulane is for real. 2-0, 121 points on the year. New Mexico, of course, we expected them to be in the in the talk. And all you have to do is just click on their name from the standings here, and you can see, you know, Kyler Murray, Murray obviously, you know, great player, but I have to tip my hat to Phil here and his scouting of running backs because look at that. I mean, he's got... Guys that nobody expected to do well. He lost J.K. Dobbins, but he comes back with a great pickup here. Um, Tyson Williams. Right there. Big time pickup right there. And he and he did really well for Oregon. Can't remember the guy the guy's name. So many names. But uh Phil is really good at scouting these running backs. 
Let's just give it a chance to load here. Let's look at Oregon here. Yeah, Elijah Mitchell. What happened to Mitchell? Uh oh. Well, he's uh, 5'11", 217. He's a big boy. Interesting. But no, um, Phil with um, with this, this New Mexico team. Very good team. You got Murray, of course, who I loved coming out of college. Everybody said he was too small, but I watched the tape, and I was like, this guy can throw a laser. He was a shortstop in uh, baseball. But they got Jamar Chase. Good pick up there. You know, solidify that wide receiver core. Firemouth is looking decent as a tight end. New Mexico is a solid team. Weight wall loads. So New Mexico looks good. Tulane looks really strong. Daniel Jones is finally starting to realize his potential. Of course, Gerald Lane with Ohio State is looking good, but I want to talk about Georgia real quick here. The problem with Georgia, they, they got Lamar Jackson in transfer this year, but the problem is, look at the wide receiver core. Brandon Ayuk. What's going on with Brandon Ayuk? What is this? Two targets in week two? No targets in week one? Whoa. That's crazy stuff right there. Unexpected. Maybe he rested on his laurels last year. Ate a few too many Cheetos with sour cream dip. I don't know. I don't know what the problem is with Ayuk, but... That's a problem for Ohio, uh, Georgia. They have a great quarterback, great running game. The wide receiver core. They, I mean, K.J. Osborne is a free agent pickup. They do have great tight ends. And in the end, they might actually be going with a two tight end set. And that might save this team. Defensively, strong at linebacker. Not bad at defensive line. DBs, not bad. But yeah, we were all talking about Georgia being the favorite in the offseason because of um, Lamar Jackson, the transfer. And Georgia is doing well at 2-0, and but seriously, they are not necessarily a lead pipe cinch. You got Oregon here right behind them. Of course, Justin Herbert. Elijah Mitchell, who got hurt. Miles Gaskin, not bad. The running game is a little banged up here. The wide receivers are going to need to take over, it looks like, on this team. And they have some good ones. Look at that. Jalen Waddle, Mike Williams, strong. Tight end, you know, decent. It's going to be interesting. But anyways, I'm done with all that. I mean, I just wanted to just go over, like, how you run a team in this league. And um, I love this league. This is a fun league. I realize that, you know, it's it's not your standard football league. It's not your standard fantasy football league. But it is a lot of fun because it's a lot like college football. You know, it's a building thing. And you strike while the iron is hot in this league. You know, that's the way it works. You're going to have to take your chops sometimes. You're going to have to have a down year. And that's why I'm not against, you know, having like, of, of the 14 teams in this league, I'm not against having like two owners in each in this league. You know, like a guy owns two two teams. Because you have your rebuild and you have your contender. But, you know, if some guys just want to run one team, that's fine. But, again... This league is meant to be like a, you know, a league where you do your research. You research the young players and you strategize. It's it's just a game. It's like playing Monopoly. This is not your father's fantasy football league. This is a, fo a fantasy football league that is 
built around strategy, around working around diversity, and trying to figure out how to win based on scouting. There's no trades, so you can't take advantage of uh, weak owners. Trades ruin leagues, all right? And that's why I'm against trades. And I understand that Gerald is, is trying to entertain the idea of like a, a system where we could have a two-for-one, like no more than three players involved in a trade type scenario. And I'm not against that, but I'm very skeptical of it because I don't like people taking advantage in trade. But in that scenario, I could see where it might work. If you limited it, limited it to like three players per deal, so one guy sends one guy over and gets two in return, or vice versa, or just one and one, that could work. And that would have to be like a strict rule. Because seriously, trades ruin leagues. And I think it's it's, you know, easy enough to build a like powerhouse in this league just because you get a higher draft pick based on your success. So if you win the title, you get the number one pick next year. You might be losing a great quarterback, but you get a crack at that top guy. And if you scout correctly, you get that quarterback who produces, and you keep the program going. But mostly, this is just for fun. It's like a challenge. And that's what makes this league great. And I really wish that more guys would get on, on board with this thing, because this is a pretty fun league. So we have some pretty good games coming up this week. Ohio State, California, that's a joke. State's going to roll. Wisconsin, Maryland, that's the game of the week in my opinion. Georgia, Michigan could be a good game. Georgia, you know, not not infallible. Michigan, under underperforming right now. I think that could be a good game. Tulane, Fresno State, another one where I think that maybe, you know, Tulane, they are dominating right now, but Fresno State has some talent. Could be a good game. App State, New Mexico, depending on what Mark does with Trevor Lawrence, this will be a good game. If he decides to redshirt Lawrence, well, New Mexico is going to roll. Penn State, Oregon, good game. I think that uh, Oregon has the uh, is favored here. Never know, though. Maybe um, Tua wakes up in this one. San Diego State and Alabama. I think it's a roll for Alabama. State is going to redshirt Trey Lance. They're going to redshirt a lot of guys, so Alabama is going to get a gimme here. And with that, Alabama will be 2-1 and one most likely. I can't imagine how it would go down any other way. And that's all I have. I hope you guys are here to the end and enjoy the video. And, um, you know, if you have any opinions, just throw them down there in the, uh, on chat, you know. I love to hear what you guys have to say. You know, we got, um, we got App State talking here. We got Mark. We got, um, we got Gerald coming in here once in a while. There's Gerald representing. We got, um, Phil coming in in New Mexico. I like it. I need more of you guys to come in here and do some smack talking, you know? Because I'd love to hear from you guys. This is a fun league. You know, this is a league where you don't have to set up a lineup. You just have to redshirt guys sometimes, but you don't have to set a lineup. This is just all about the scouting. And it's a fun league, man. It's a fun fucking league. And that's all I have to say today, guys. Um, happy fall, everybody. Fall is tomorrow. It was uh, in the mid-90s here in San Diego today, East County. It's going to be even hotter tomorrow. <laughs> it's pretty typical for September. But uh, next three months is going to be a lot of fun. It's football season, guys. Let's get into this. All right, we'll talk to you later.